Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, Clarence City Council's online meeting. I'm Mayor Doug Chipman, and I, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this meeting. Before proceeding, uh, I'd like to invite you to join us in the Council prayer. Mm -hmm. Almighty God, we humbly beseech thee to vow safe vice blessing on this Council, direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of thy glory and to the true welfare of the people of the City of Clarence. Amen. 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 I'd now like to pay our respects to the Tasmanian Aboriginal community as the traditional custodians of this land in which we are gathering tonight and acknowledge Elders past and present. Tonight we are again live streaming this meeting via YouTube. A copy of the agenda is available via Council's website and voting will occur electronically via the chat bar on the side of the screen or for those that aren't able to log on. Um, to that chat box, I'll take an oral vote. So I declare the meeting open and note that all aldermen are present. I will be dealing with uh, a number of the items as starred items. Um, firstly, though, before moving to that, the Mayor's communications, I have tabled uh, significant appointments over the last three weeks since the last regular council meeting including two at which the Deputy Mayor has represented me in my absence. Um, I'd now like to deal with uh, declarations of interest from Alderman a close associate. At this stage, I have uh, Alderman Piers for 11.3.1 and Alderman James for item 11.3.4. Are there any other expressions or conflicts of interest to be recorded? Thank you. Now moving through the start items before calling for an omnibus vote. Firstly, the confirmation of minutes for the 29th of June and the special planning authority meeting on the 13th of July, as circulated, be taken as read and confirmed. Are there any questions or points to raise on those minutes? I'll take that as a no. Um, secondly, that Council notes the workshops conducted on the 6th and 13th of July and the agenda brief on the 17th of July. Are there any points of concern on those? Moving to item 6, tabling of petitions. I note that there are none. Item 10, reports from outside bodies. I'm sorry, got a hand up there. Um, <coughs> Wendy is mute. Yeah, Alderman Kendi. Yeah, sorry, I hadn't even touched it. Don't know how that happened, but interesting. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Um, moving on to item 10, reports from outside bodies. 10.1, uh, reports from single and joint authorities. Copying, refusal, refuse disposal site joint authority. Alderman Walker, is there any report you wish to make? No, we're scheduled to meet for the quarterly meeting next month. Okay. I have nothing from the Tasmanian Water Corporation to report, and um, there's a meeting tomorrow of the four uh, Metro Mayors and GMs uh, under the Greater Hobart Committee. I'll uh, report the minutes for that in due course. Moving on to item, Alderman James. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, that matter that would maybe considered by the four Metro mayors, would that uh, incorporate any reference or discussion that you're aware of in relation to amalgamation? Uh, amalgamations is not on the agenda, Alderman James. Uh, it was looked at comprehensively several years ago, and uh, this council found that it was uneconomical to proceed with any form of amal amalgamation. Yeah, time it has not come time. back onto the agenda. Thank you. Time has moved on since then, yes, thanks. Um, moving on to item 10.2, reports from council and special committees and other representative bodies. Uh, we have none on the agenda. Are there reports from council, uh, from Alderman, Alderman Chong? Uh, thank you, Mr. Matt. Um, I've tabled the um, minutes from the event special committee from March and the Jazz Festival report and also the minutes from the Richmond Advisory Committee for June. Thank you. Are there any other reports? 
I'll take that as a no. Moving on to item 11.1, that the information contained in the weekly briefing reports for 29th of June, 6th and 13th of July be noted. Are there any questions on the weekly briefing reports? There being none, I will ask for a move and a seconder from the omnibus motion that all the start items uh, be accepted. Alderman uh, Chong, uh, Piers, and I think it was Alderman Chong seconded it. If I could, could uh, have a rating box, please. Uh, it's up now, Mayor. Mr. Mayor, can you record me as an I? Thank you. And Alderman Blomley. Mr. Mayor, I've been able, I'm using both devices, so I can use the chat bar on my other device. So I, I have voted. Thank you. Thank you. I'm still waiting for a majority. We're still missing one vote, Mayor. Uh, Ten seconds, I'll close the vote. I'll declare the motion carried. Now moving on to um, the um, remainder of the agenda, starting with uh, item seven, public question time. Um, Item 7.1, uh, we have uh, public questions on notice from uh, Mrs. Jen Council and Ms. Linda Thompson. General Manager, could you uh, give us those questions and perhaps the answers as well, please? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll start with the questions from Ms. Jan Council. The first question um, is, is the council, is the Clarence City Council aware that it was the respondents, Hunter Developments, who requested an adjournment of the Rampat hearing scheduled for 15th of June, not the Rosney Hills Friends Network. And the second question is, is the Clarence City Council aware that the rescheduled dates for the Rampat hearing are the 7th to 11th of September 2020? The answer to the question is as follows. Council is a respondent to the appeal. It has received the updated procedural orders as issued to all parties. The second um, uh, lot of questions on notice are from uh, Ms Linda Thompson of Montague Bay. And Ms Thompson asks, how many tourist accommodation facilities in Clarence City are located in Zone 18 recreational land? The second question is, please list the names of the recreational areas where those accommodation facilities exist. Um, Mayor, I might ask Mr Lovell if he can respond, please. Uh, before you do, um, we're getting a bit of feedback. If uh, Alderman and uh, officers could please turn their mics on mute and less required. Thank you. Thank you. Through you, Mr Mayor, um, I can advise that there are no tourist accommodation uses in the recreation zone properties within the city. But, uh, however, I... I would like to uh, put some context around that, uh, and that is uh, to make the point that it's actually quite a varied and flexible zone, providing for a range of, uh, of permit required, permitted uh, and uh, discretionary uses. Um, and for example, those discretionary uses are quite wide and they include business and professional services, community meeting and entertainment, educational and occasional, and occasional care, domestic dog breeding and occasional care, emergency services, food services, general retail and hire, um, uh, pleasure boat facilities, a tourist operation, transport depot and distribution, utilities, vehicle parking and visitor accommodation. And it's the case also that there are a few of those uses in our recreation zone as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. General Manager. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, that takes us on to questions without notice, if uh, you're happy for me to move on to that. Yeah, I understand there's a few of those. Uh, there, is, uh, there are two questions from Mr Griggs of Risdenvale 
Uh, they're reasonably lengthy in terms of their background, so I'll take them one at a time. Uh, the first question is, a contractor installed a new sewerage pipeline along the edge of Risdenvale Riverlet behind houses from the fire station to the end of Lantana Road near number 64 on behalf of a property developer and required by Taswater. The work the worked a few work. months ago. The curb and guttering was damaged. The road surface was destroyed. No proper drainage channel was put in for stormwater to enter the rivulet, causing serious erosion, and the end road railing needs to be replaced. Can Council please repair the above damage, bill the contractor or Taswater or property developer who paid for the pipeline or Council itself? Um, we'll take that question on notice so that we can undertake some further investigation, Mayor. The second question is as follows. Can Council please install pump action liquid soap dispensers in its toilets and paper towel dispensers or hand dryers. Some toilets have soap which is handled by everyone using the toilets, very poor public hygiene. Very many have no way of drying hands, including some of the, the most very recently built toilets. These items can have protection put around them to stop vandalism. I've spoken to people in public health who have said the current standards in public toilets need to be improved quickly if a second wave of COVID-19 was to happen. Can this issue be dealt with as quickly as possible? The answer is as follows. We have tried over several years to place liquid soap in our public toilets. Unfortunately, there is an element of antisocial behaviour which consistently vandalises wall-mounted soap dispensers and deliberately spills or spreads soap over the floors, resulting in a high risk of users potentially slipping. This matter was reviewed in light of the current COVID crisis and was discussed with Council. At that stage, it was decided not to pursue the supply and installation of liquid soap dispensers, but to provide solid soap. There have been a few incidents to date where the soap has been squashed on the floor. Signage has been placed at each facility advising users to exercise good personal hygiene. That completes the, uh, the answers to questions without notice, Mayor. Thanks. And I understand you have some questions without notice? Uh, sorry, that was the uh, questions without notice. That's uh, both lots done. Okay. Um, so you've answered also item 7.3, answers to previous questions taken on notice? Uh, I believe so, Mayor. Um, let me just check. Um, those uh, those answers are contained within the agenda uh, as published, Mayor. Okay, so I take them as read. Fine, thank you. Um, moving on to item eight, uh, deputations by members of the public. I understand you have four general managers. I do, Mayor. I um I have them in order of appearance in the agenda. Um, so I'll um I'll read each of those in turn. Um, the first relates to item eleven point three point one. Uh, which is a development application for one Bayfield Street. And this is a um, deputation from Mr. Alexander Harros, uh, who is the applicant. If you uh, could th uh, hold it there for a moment, please, Jim. Alderman Edmonds. Uh, yeah, just uh, look, I don't know what the, what, what's happened, but um, I've got a notification here in the chat bar that says the meeting stopped recording. And I noticed that the uh, notification across the top isn't there. I don't know if that's affecting our... Uh, uh, that's, that's my recording, uh, Alderman Edmonds. I'm not sure why it stopped, um, but I'm, I'm sure I'll just check with, uh, with yeah. Jack. Um, Jack, can you just confirm for us that the live recording is still streaming? I've got the same message, Ian. Yeah? yeah, I've just re restarted the recording at my end. Yeah. Yeah, it's gone now. Um, uh, Jack advises that uh, the live stream is, is proceeding okay. Okay. Would you please continue with those deputations? Thank you. Um, so Mr uh, Alexander Harris's deputation reads as follows. To the Mayor of the Clarence Municipality, Mr Doug Chipman and Alderman, during the past few days I've met with the Clarence Council staff and Alderman to discuss my application. 
I'm happy to accept the council's recommendation for the parking in lieu payment. This was a complex process, but a good outcome has been achieved. This is a very exciting development, which is reflected in the number of job inquiries and messages of support from the local community for the project. We are super excited to bring a different style of night trade to the Eastern Shore, which will create jobs for over 20 staff. Our amazing butcher, M&J Meats, Clarence is expanding to meet future demand. We look forward to being a member of the Clarence community. Thank you. Um, I'll move on to the second deputation. Um, this deputation relates to item 11.3.2 and is from Mr. Braden Millhouse in respect to 377 South Arm Road, Lauderdale. Dear councillors, I would like the opportunity to support my application for a boundary fence at the front of my property at 377 South Arm Road, Lauderdale. My name is Braden Millhouse and with my fiance, Sarah, we have started our life journey together within the Clarence community and are excited by growing our young family in this wonderful location. I understand that there are three objections to the application to build the front perimeter fence. No doubt these objections have been generated by the notice recently placed on the property boundary. I imagine the site of a paling fence is the consensus for objection. I'm unsure of the exact nature of these objections, but I would like to make you aware of our plan and design choices for the fence before it is written off as just a bland paling fence. Uh, there are a number of headings next, and so I'll read those. Uh, the first is aesthetics. It is our intention to place a cap across the top of the entire fence and paint the fence an environmentally compatible colour. In addition, we fully intend to plant shrubs the length of the fence to also make it environmentally sustainable and aesthetically appealing to the eye. We intend to use rock formations to prevent the to present the entrance at the driveway in a subtle but attractive style. I understand the concerns, but make assurances that the fence will be an attractive highlight at the gateway to Lauderdale rather than the expected appearance per perceived by the objectors. And the next heading is requirements. Within the application, I am seeking a height of 2.1 metres. I have moved the fence line inside my property line by five metres, and it is more than two metres from the main sewerage line, which also runs inside my property boundary. I have complied with all advice relating to requirements to this point. The next heading is security. I am seeking to a secure perimeter to protect our investment from opportunistic crime. The opportunism I speak of is the ability of persons to observe from the South Arm Highway our entire house and land when passing by in vehicles and on foot. The mitigating factor is unfortunately the height of the road going past our home. The road has been raised to make the road more level for vehicles, but in doing so is at least one metre above the natural flow of our property, giving motorists and alike a grandstand view of our home, our activities, and possessions as they drive by. The next heading is safety. As discussed, we have a growing family and also pet dogs. Given the South Arm Highway is an arterial road linking the South Arm Peninsula, Acton, Seven Mile Beach and so on, thousands of vehicles use the road daily and a fence that is anything but strong and without the chance of being infiltrated by our children and pets does not give us peace of mind. I'm asking respectfully that approval be granted to construct our fence on the application as submitted and the explanation and assurances provided by this notice. The final heading is rural. The length of the front perimeter of our property is 150 metres and the cost of the fence other than palings would be prohibitive. Given the property we own is classified as rural, we can't understand the grounds for which an opposition to a paling fence could be upheld. We look forward to a positive outcome and this matter being resolved satisfactorily. That concludes that deputation. The next deputation is in relation to item 11.3.4, which is uh, the Bell Reef Beach Park application and comes from uh, Mrs Joanne Marsh of Bell Reef. Uh, the deputation reads as follows. The elected aldermen of the City of Clarence have a responsibility to ensure that the design of infrastructure, variously named a footpath, a shared cycle path, 
and a promenade path in the proposal and attachments satisfies the highest possible level of safety and amenity. I believe the term footpath works is misleading. The working draft has line markings usually seen on multi-user paths. The 2015 master plan has been labelled relocate cycle path. A footpath is generally for foot tra traffic only. Dog control signage refers to the current path as a multi-user pathway. Community safety is paramount. Safety is the law. The pathway in the park is part of a coastal path many kilometres in length beside the River Derwent. It is a vitally important community asset used all year round by an increasing number, an increased number of people who have realised the health and wellbeing benefits of walking, running and riding during the COVID-19 emergency and reasonably into the future. In my representation to Council, I recommended that Pitt and Sherry assess the safety of the current pathway linked to the park. It varies in width, becomes very narrow, meanders, has poor line of sight, has structures and vegetation with inadequate setback, faded line markings and inadequate fencing and barriers. As a highly utilised multi-user path, it is unsafe. In their 2014 safety review, Pitt and Sherry state that the proposed new link in the park is in an area of high level interaction between pedestrians and cyclists. Pedestrians are moving along and across the path, pathway between a major play park and the beach. In the document, it has been stated three times that a 4.5 metre path be adopted to mitigate the risks of pedestrian and cyclist conflicts with plants and structures set back. Despite this, the city planning manager continues to recommend a much narrower path, three metres. This means that the planner's statement at 5.7 that Pitt and Sherry's recommendations have been and will continue to be implemented across all stages of the project is erroneous. On June 25th, 2020, an article in the Mercury quotes a council spokesman as saying future extensions of the path width can be undertaken should demand prove to need this. I have photographic evidence that indicates that many hundreds of multi-users crowded the path during a winter's day on Sunday, July 19, 2020. I ask Alderman to consider whether this proposal is providing infrastructure that responds adequately to the current and future safety and amenity needs of the community. This proposal must be modified so that it is fit for purpose now and into the future or refused. That concludes that deputation. The final deputation tonight is from Mr Thomas Chick of Mornington uh, in relation to item 11.5.1. Mr Chick writes as follows. I submit this deputation in support of item 11.5.1 of tonight's meeting, which, among other things, amends Council's road, road priorities list to include as its highest priority upgrading the Mornington interchange, which I henceforth call the roundabout. I do not own a car. The vast majority of the time, if there's somewhere I want to go, I take the bus or I walk. Unfortunately, between me and much of urban Clarence stands the roundabout. To describe the roundabout as a pedestrian death trap that has miraculously avoided pedestrian deaths would, be, would still understate the discomfort and anxiety I feel in attempting to cross it to and from my home in Mornington, east of the roundabout. The southern crossing across the South Arm Highway is fraught. Going from east to west, seeing traffic coming around the roundabout to access the South Arm Highway is difficult. Going from west to east, a difference of two lanes width it becomes almost impossible. It is already problematic. The Northern Crossing also crossing the B33, but now as Flagscarf Gully Link is worse. The visibility issues for traffic coming around the roundabout remain, but this isn't even the biggest problem. The crossing through incoming traffic can become impossible for minutes on end. 20 metres north of the crossing, the B33 is joined by westbound traffic exiting the Tasman Highway and another 200 metres north of that eastbound traffic exiting the Tasman Highway is also added. Crossing here is perilous, terrifying and almost impossible to safely complete in a timely manner. The word safer implies some level of safety that is already extant. I do not use that word as there is none. 
the officer's report proposes that the roundabout be signalised and that pedestrian crossings be graded, separate, separated, i.e. raised or lowered from the rest of the intersection. As I support making the roundabout safe for pedestrians by any means, I support both this proposal and the motion as a whole and hope that Council will do the same. Thank you. That concludes the deputations, Mayor. Thanks, General Manager. You're welcome to a glass of water. Thank you. Um, moving on to item nine, we have notices of motion. Alderman Mulder. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the uh, motion which, of which I gave notice. Do I have a seconder, please? Uh, Alderman James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the motion, I think, is, uh, is fairly self-explanatory. Um, the whole idea is that um, as we move towards um, this developing a uh, waste management policy and an, an attempt to um, recycle and recover as much as we can, the issue of glass um, comes before us, as well as that of plastics. Now, I, I just intend to deal with glass on this particular motion uh, because there have been cases where, when our previous recycler uh, had the situation where some of the quarries were refusing to accept glass, even though it was delivered to their gate, free of charge. So the way to create a circular economy with waste is to create a demand. And the demand um, would be, and, and the demand is created by government and councils requiring that all concrete for their purposes that, that's used for our roadways and other um, concrete you know, matters contain glass where, where possible. This fits in nicely to the schemes of container deposit legislation where um, our current recycling um, actually mitigates against those sorts of uh, container deposits, particularly in terms of glass, but also in aluminium where these things are turning up in the thing. Now, if we have a container deposit system, then it will be interest. And I remember um, many, many years ago as a Boy Scout uh, going around the urban areas collecting bottles. Some places were uh, more productive than others, but um, that was in a case where there was a market for those bottles. Um, so this is a way of uh, perhaps if we create a demand for the recycled glass, we can solve the problems. The idea is not to replace gra all gravel because simply there isn't enough glass, um, I would imagine, to replace the amount of uh, gravel being quarried. But the practicalities of how this might work are a matter for the officer's um, advice and, um, but, and I can sort of, in, in, in sort of suggest that um, that advice really um, needs to work at the practicalities. But what we're talking about here now is that in principle, we, we are as a council are suggesting this is a good idea. And I can imagine that one of the ways it would work is that all we do require is that quarries provide a certificate that they are taking all the glass that is being delivered to them into, their, um, into the quarries and being mixed into concrete. And the simple way to check to see whether that's the case is to uh, find out whether there is a whether um, all glass is being taken or whether some is being re refused. So um, I commend the motion and I look forward to uh, working uh, the, both the officers and state and other local government working through this system so that we can start to use this highly valuable product which can be processed simply by mixing it with the existing quarry crushing operations. Thank you, Alderman James. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The matter in relation to what's being proposed here is a good one in as much as that a few years ago when I was Deputy Chair of the Southern Waste Strategy Authority, we partnered with the local road authority on the East Derwent Highway between Ronnie and the bridge and used recycled glass in that uh, resurfacing of the highway, particularly from Ronnie to the bridge. And there was a sign uh, installed on the corner there, which basically said that this was one of the test, I think, programs in relation to using recycled glass in the actual 
supply of the bitumen on that particular road. I don't think it's been done, uh, and I may stand corrected on that in relation to other section or on other roads, not only state roads but council roads. But it, I believe it has been utilised in some of the other councils, and the success of that has been, I think from all intents and purposes, uh, taken on board by some of those councils. Part two of the motion is a good one as well, in as much as it requests an officer's report on the feasibility of requiring all gravel and concrete products used, <coughs> excuse me, on council projects to contain the recycled glass. And I think that may be the test case in order for the feasibility of whether that is appropriate or otherwise for council and look, we look forward basically to the report from the officers in relation to that. And uh, finally, in relation to part three. Uh, you've gone mute on us, Alderman James. You've accidentally pressed the mute button. Okay, and I think we're back on track, I think, Mr Mayor now. Uh, we lost you when you said finally. Uh, finally, okay. Well, finally. Um, Part three of the motion is also taking on notice the Department of Primary Industry, etc., of its desire to see the mandatory requirement for recycled glass in government projects. And I think that's a win-win in relation to that department leading the charge in relation to this. I see council support on this very, very, I think, worthwhile and doing our bit for the recycling industry, particularly on roads in the city and hopefully statewide. Thanks, Alderman James. I have no other speakers indicating at this stage. In which case, I guess there's no need for... Oh, hold on. Alderman Warren. Oh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, look, I'm fully in favour of recycling and I think it's a, a really good idea, but I find um, that I find this a little difficult to vote on because I'm not an expert in road resurfacing. Um, or surfacing. So um, I would have been a little more comfortable if the first point hadn't been included, if it was just asking for a report on the feasibility. Um, the only information I've been able to find is that uh, in um, for over 10 years in Birmingham in the UK, they use um, non-colour sorted recycled glass and it's been used to make high friction road surfaces in braking zones before junctions and crossings and so on, enabling shorter stopping distances in an emergency. It soon abrades requiring frequent reapplications um, and ends up being more expensive. So I, I just um, I think that getting a report on the feasibility is really important. Um, and um, while I won't vote against the motion, I would have been more comfortable if it hadn't put um, mandatory and in principle in the first point. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Alderman Pearce? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Look, I do agree with Alderman Warren. I'm not going to vote against it, but point one, I was a bit concerned about having that in there. Now, as Alderman James alluded to earlier, I live in the area where that uh, piece of road from Ronnie Street to the bridge was laid, and I, I think it's very good. And I'd probably like to see more of it, but just the wording of point one, I must admit, I wasn't really happy with. Thank you. Any other speakers? Uh, right, a reply on Mulder. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, look, I, I, I just deal with the um, issues of um, the um, the use of it. Um, yes, Ronnie Street has been there, and I have no record of, I have no uh, recollection or no knowledge of that surface actually having any problems whatsoever, and of, and it's an extremely high traffic area, and in fact, I would suggest that uh, the addition of glass has actually made it stronger and better. Um, the other area um, is, uh, not only has it been used in Ronnie Street, Mr Mayor, as you pointed out to me the other day, um, it's been used in the uh, car park at uh, the Rosney Bowls Club. And uh, there it has been, and also another area where um, I'm pretty sure that some of these areas are actually uh, better and stronger roadways because of the glass. Now, we'll get to the issue of the mandatory and the in-principle. The two need to be seen together. As a principle, the use of glass is a very good idea. As a, but we have discovered that unless we make it mandatory, unless we specify that for 
government jobs at least, we require this to be added, we have got no guarantee that we are not going to end up with them deciding that it's easier to mine more bluestone than it is to take um, uh, glass as a, as a suitable additive. Now, um, on those bases, I would suggest that if you've got some concerns about the mand being mandatory and you've got concerns that, that you, you nearly need to vote what the item says, we are in principle supporting this. And, of course, making it mandatory, it will be subject to the officers' reports and investigations. So I strongly commend this motion um, because it commits council to absolutely nothing and it doesn't set us on a path. It simply, if you like, signals the virtue of creating a circular economy for waste products. Sometimes that will become at an expense, but that is the price you pay for not having all this stuff end up in landfill. Uh, thank you. Could I have a voting box for item 9.1, please? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, it's up now. Mr. Mayor, I'm still having trouble getting as a guest, as uh, being a guest, so um, can you record, obviously, my vote in favour of my motion? Certainly. Uh, Alderman Blomley. I, I think Alderman Blomley's back online, is he is. Um, I'm able to vote. Thank you. OK, I have all aldermen have voted um, and that's carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, the next item of active item on the agenda is the planning items. And so I advise that we are now uh, Alderman Walker, you got your hand up? Uh, yes, to move the planning item, but uh, keep speaking. Okay. I'd like to advise that we are about to sit as a planning authority under the Land Use Planning and Approval Act of 1993, and uh, Alderman Pears has declared an interest in the first item. So if he uh, intends to uh, continue with that declaration of interest, if you could leave the meeting, please, Alderman Pears. Do I have to hang up, General Manager? Yes, OK, good. Uh, yes, I'll invite you back in. Alderman Pears has left, Mayor. Thank you. I have a mover. Alderman Walker, do I have a seconder, please? Uh, Alderman Kennedy. Um, Alderman Walker? Look, thank you, Mr Mayor. I, I think there are two key elements that will be a consideration in the debate. The first is the development itself, and... I guess that really should be the primary one, but but the second, I suspect, will be the element of uh, the contributions towards parking. In, in fact, the reason we are dealing with the alternate uh, alternate motion as circulated by the officers is that the applicant identified an error in the dimensions in the application they submitted, and as such, subsequent the subsequent calculations for parking requirements. And I want to thank the officers for expeditiously investigating the matter um, late last week. The development has been thoroughly assessed and is rightly recommended for approval. And whilst not the strictest planning consideration, it is noted Mr Berger will add choice to eating options for the Eastern Shore. Uh, the night economy uh, was indeed mentioned and um, that, is, that is an area where we lose a lot of economic capture within Clarence. Um, the site, I believe, also has the ability to hold kids' parties upstairs and builds again on the employment and economic activity that's much needed. It is beyond me uh, what reasons an alderman could have to reject the DA on any grounds, uh, but everyone gets a chance to speak when, when a DA is before us. The secondary element is the conditions in the application, as usual, for in lieu parking contributions when there's a shortfall in the generated calculations. And this is not a unique mechanism to Clarence. In fact, um, Ross, a uh, uh, question through you, Mr Mayor, to, to, to Ross Lovell. Are you able to quantify, uh, I think Glenorchy and Kingborough also have similar amounts? Do you, are you able to, to put a quantum to, to the figures that they charge? Mr Lovell. Through you, Mr Mayor. Um, yes, they both charge have cash in lieu policies. And um, I'm not sure I can put my fingers on it right now, but they 
but their, their charge, I think, is somewhat higher than Clarence's, um, and, but it's, it's based on a similar formula, uh, which is to do with the value of the land plus the cost of constructing the car park. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lovell. Yeah, thank you. Look, I didn't, I, I didn't ask Mr. Mr. Lovell about uh, what Hobart City Council do because they're, they're based a system of uh, a captive audience where they'll, they'll hit them up for, for, for what I would suggest is uh, quite hefty um, parking meter fees to, to anybody that wishes to conduct commerce in their city. Um, and I believe that instituting a similar parking meter regime would be deleterious to, to businesses in Clarence and antagonistic to prospective shoppers. But that may be one option that fellow aldermen are suggesting be implemented as an alternate to the current system. Here's a prop. Mr Mayor, that's a blank piece of paper. And that's not where we start from when we talk about uh, developing parking um, strategies. Um, we start with you know the legacy policies that have been in place for some time. Um, although there's an element of the contest of ideas and in every council item, even, even in the constrained environment of sitting as a planning authority. Um, now, I, I'd also note that there weren't any alternative motions circulated, but, but I am looking forward to hearing any alternatives to in-lieu contributions. Uh, again, noting that we aren't starting with a blank piece of paper, so there would be consequences of changing the policy. Uh, it is an imperfect situation, and, and like much of local government, uh, to, to feel your way through, it can be like swimming through treacle. But, um, you know, I wouldn't insinuate that, that anyone would, would, would engage in vacuous virtue signalling. But, you know, if, if people wish to, to, to rally against the current mechanism of in-loop contributions, then you can't just, you know, shake your fists. Part of that has to be what, what are the alternatives? And I'm really wanting to hear those that, that feel that way as to... Um, how they would go about compensating all those businesses that have already paid in lieu contributions uh, or, or how they would compensate those businesses that paid extra money to secure sites with, with on-site parking uh, because both of those would, would effectively be uh, have a loss of value in their assets if we, if we just tip the system on its head. And who would pay that? It would be in the mum and dad residential ratepayers. And I don't think they should be funding millions in compensation. Uh, for, for, for those paybacks or, 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 or to, to build multi-level car parks um, or necessarily to be, you know, reaching into their pocket every time they want to just duck into a 10-minute shop in, in um, Bayfield Street. But I think as a council we need to find a way that de-risks the contributions, which do potentially result in landlords pocketing the extra car spaces if a tenant business uh, has to close early on. Um Hand wringing is not necessarily a bad thing, but in this climate, should usually be done with aquium rather than empty rhetoric. I believe that we need to find a way for contributions to be paid off at a much longer dura duration. But sadly, that's currently out of the hands of council. That that actually requires changing at, at higher levels, and and that's why I would be foreshadowing a prospective notice of motion at the next meeting. Uh, to be working Thank you, with those Alderman Walker, Alderman Kendi. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I don't think there's much more I can add to uh, what Alderman Walker has very uh, succinctly covered there. Uh, a lot of work has gone into getting to where we are now, and I thank the officers for their additional work towards the end of the week in getting us to where we are, and I will be supporting this recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Warren. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, and I commend Alderman Walker on his on bringing this motion. Um, I commend the officers on the compromise that was reached during the week and also um, on Alderman Walker's excellent explanation of the parking cash-in-lieu scheme and uh, the fact that we can't vote against it without having reasonable alternatives. I actually have a question, and this might be one for... Um, uh, Mr. Lovell rather than um, Alderman Walker. Um, I think I note, unless I've missed something, there is no provision for um, disabled access to the second floor of this development. Um, can you please clarify if that's acceptable under the planning scheme and Mr. under Lovell. disability legislation? Uh, Mr. Lovell, could you address that, please? Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, it's actually not a requirement uh, of the planning scheme, but it will be something that's looked at at the building stage. 
Um, it's not. A, it's not a. Re there's no relevant performance criteria for it. Thank you. Alderman James. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, I think uh, from the outset, this has been a a, a really good um, result, not only from those persons or on the council, those my colleagues on the council who, in fact, have been seeking some sort of um, change to the car parking policy, and I'm speaking in particular in relation to the cash in lieu, because it has been considered, and I think as early as last year, we did have um, uh, Mr Lovell present to council at our workshop, and he actually outlined what the requirements or what the uh, policy is in some of those larger councils on, on, on uh, Clarence's door. The fact of the matter is that council with its existing policy um, is basically incorporated within the planning scheme. And by the very nature of Mr Lovell going through and comparing what Clarence's current scheme is to that of Hobart, in particular Kingborough or even Gonorkey, there is a very large component within Clarence's car parking code, a community service obligation, which stands out by many degrees, I think, in relation to what Clarence offers and what, in fact, is contrary, I think, um, to the um, other councils that have a, a policy which they work out through some means or other. The fact of the matter is, in this particular case, the, the parties have come to an agreement and I won't go into the detail in relation to that. But I think that on the very basis of having a car parking uh, code policy, it basically, and in particular in relation to the CBD in the uh, Rosny area, we need to be able to consider what the future plans are for parking. And already there are some concerns in relation to it and in the report, the officers have addressed the capacity in relation to Winkley and the capacity in relation to what the car parking can offer as further down the track. And council over the years has given some consideration to a multi-storey car park. And not to say that that may have to be a, a possibility or consideration down the track. So in the relation to this particular motion, we are, and I believe provide a very uh, sympathetic policy and we do provide a community service obligation in relation and which the Clarence ratepayers foot to a degree. So I think this is a really win-win situation and I know that the, um, the applicants have been able to work through and provide an updated or a, a revised um, plan and that has resulted in 13 car parkers in lieu of the 15. And I think that at the end of the day, this is a very positive outcome, not only for the developer, but also for the uh, citizens of Clarence. Thank you. Alderman Newington. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, look, I mean, obviously, uh, I'm made pretty clear I'm not real happy about the, the parking in lieu plan. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, I agree that it would be very complicated process to you know to unravel some of the things that have happened in the past and some of the um the complications that exist in it i certainly wouldn't support um reimbursing people but just because something's difficult doesn't mean that you shouldn't have a crack at it um look i don't have all the answers at the moment the one thing i do know is that i've never ever been to eastlands and not been able to get a car park where i want to park and i think if we're going to take money off people uh for this sort of stuff you know, the two things that should be part of that is that that person should be guaranteed that they get car parked right outside their business, and we can never really offer that. So I have a real problem with that issue. But the other thing is that I think that, um, you know, if we're not providing or doing something with the money that we're, that we're um, you know, taking off businesses, I think we need to have a serious look at um, that issue because I don't think that's appropriate. Um, I think, you know, look, I mean, you know, it's tough enough in business um, to get started in any uh, new business. And I just think that um, 
while you know the the, uh, the proponent here has agreed, you know, has come to the agreement. I think it's been worked out with him and his landlord to try and share the costs, and uh, we've reduced um, our request for funds. Um, you know, I still have a major problem with it, but look, I um, uh, you know, it's you know, we keep talking about what what are we going to do for mental health and what are we going to do for you know COVID recovery and all this sort of stuff. Well. Support business in any way we can is is probably the most important thing that we can do in that space. And I think that if we can look at that and help the nighttime economy, which has been brought up, you know, Belle Reve Village is the way it is because of this this exact issue. And I think same thing with Rosny. It's taken us until now to get a business or a restaurant that's you know likely to open up outside of you know shopping centre hours and at other times. And I think uh, you know if there's a bit of momentum there, we should be doing whatever we can to keep that happening. Thanks, Alderman Newington. Any other speakers? Uh, right, a reply, Alderman Walker. Sorry, Mr Mayor, I can't put my hand up, so I'm... Um, Please I'm go with... ahead. Sorry, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, like Alderman Ewington, I have some concerns about this. I think it's very nice of the uh, developers. Um, I've actually met with them, and I think it's very nice of them to send an email around saying how glad they are to be, um, you know, that um, we're going to support this. Can I say at the outset... Um, the issue here isn't the development per se. It's a great development and it's a good development. Once again, we came within an ace of losing this because of the parking policy. We've got objections from um, the other people, which I believe is one of the reasons Alderman Pears isn't with this part of this debate, um, because of the fact is that patrons are likely to be using the car park which is um, private property, but which is directly adjacent to the business. The problem with our parking code is that the customers um, who are, the, the, the spaces that are being paid for are to be built at Winkley Place and not obviously in the private car park adjacent. The adjacent car park is on private property, but there are very few people who would park in that car park who would only go to this particular restaurant. So therefore, I, I think that, you know, they, they would be going to Eastlands, they would be going to other shops in the in that um, that are around that area, as well as the burger place. And the car park is not at capacity. The problem with our car parking policy is it adds value to the owner of the land, not the tenant. And it's these small businesses that are struggling. And here we have someone who in this climate is prepared to have a go. And if you look at the pattern of the of these businesses, most of their trade is probably by people who have either been and shopped somewhere else or who are walking or come off the bus. So, you know, why aren't we helping these people? Why are we putting these obstacles in their place? Why are we asking them to build, um, you know, for spaces to a car park that their customers won't use? I understand that we have got over half a million dollars in the kitty to build car parking spaces. And the reason we haven't proceeded with them is there isn't any need yet, as Alderman Newington points out. There's no need at this point in time or for the foreseeable future for us to be building multi-storey car parks in these particular areas. And particularly if you have a look around the number of vacant premises in these areas that have been vacant for a long time. We also have to have a look at the um, at the signal box at the uh, at Kangaroo Bay, where we approved a development and it hasn't gone ahead. Now, privately, I understand and um, and I do know the people concerned that they, that the addition of a car parking space to uh, to build car parks that their customers would never use became the the, the uh, straw that broke the camel's back. Look around at Linda's Farm Service Centre. We approved that uh, development, but nothing's happened. And although the officers have assured us that um, that this wasn't the uh, that parking wasn't the issue, the owners and operators, the uh, proponents of that particular development, are in the press as saying they are not proceeding due to traffic and parking issues. So instead of having a Hill Street grocery store on that particular site, we've now got a takeaway coffee pizza van. My point is, is that the asset is added to the value is, is to the developer. And really, there ought to be a way in which we can levy this on the, on the owner of the property um, and uh, on the owner of the property through the rating system. 
because I think you'll find this is sometimes just that bridge too far and we've had it time and time again. And, and, um, and, and I can say that I had a proposal put forward but the uh, councillors, but um, the advice was from the uh, planning lawyers that although it was a good idea, we couldn't implement it. And that was to re to lease these places to the operators um, on on an ongoing basis, rather than asking them to pay a contribution to the capital building. Now, if that policy was a, if it was a good idea, why are we in the business of saying, well, you know? A good idea, but the policy won't allow us. Well, isn't it time we change the policy to allow for good ideas to come through, to allow to avoid these upfront massive fees? Now, the fact that this developed this particular operator um, managed to find a way in which he could um, manipulate or, um, so I say, negotiate his way through the through the system to cushion the blow somewhat. Um, that's to his credit. Thank you, Alderman Mulder. Um, any other speakers? Uh, Orman Blomley. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Just very briefly, Mr Mayor, um, I'll, um, uh, do, I would just like to place on the record my uh, appreciation, uh, firstly, to the mover of tonight's uh, motion for the articulate way that Alderman, ja uh, Alderman uh, Walker um, expressed uh, where we're at uh, with this matter, uh, the way that the officers are so uh, effectively and promptly responded to um, and a very positive engagement with, with the applicant. And also, too, Mr Mayor, the way that the applicant uh, engaged uh, with council staff and, uh, and elected members, I think this is a win for our city. Uh, this is a good outcome. Uh, is it perfect? No, but it is a good compromised outcome. And I think that um, most importantly, what we will see is this business um, uh, delivering, um, as, it, uh, as, it, as it has in the city of Hobart, um, yeah, a first-class service that uh, Rosney Park is uh, is crying out for, and will uh, just positively add um, to to the whole uh, fabric of uh, of our city. So I think this has landed in a really in a sweet spot, and I congratulate uh, all involved. Thank you, Alderman Blomley. Other speakers, right? A reply, Alderman Walker. Um, I don't agree with every point everybody made, and I don't disagree with. Uh, the points that and the contributions that, that people made. Uh, as I said, we, we start where we start from and we try to work our way through and that's why I foreshadowed the motion, uh, hopefully at the next meeting, to to lobby at the next level because our hands are tied. Uh, we're quite constrained in, in just how we can go about these policies and then that sits as an overlay on the legacy of the previous policy that's been in place for some time and how that uh, has interacted with you know, venue value and, and choices made and, and the, the prospect of just turning it on their head and, and prospective compensation. Um, so I'll put that to the side. I'll, I'll thank everyone for their contributions. I really want to put it clearly and unambiguously on the YouTube video record that the change in contributions was a result of the calculations that were submitted not being correct. No wink, no nudge, no uh, we'll, we'll trim a few off there for you, mate, at all. This is proper, prudent, uh, but responsive when the when the when the when the actual real facts came to hand, when an error was identified, uh, the officers responding to it in a prompt fashion. The the formula and the calculation uh, and the mechanisms for that did not change a dot. Um, putting the, the, the parking side to it, which has taken up most of this, again, uh, I want to enthusiastically endorse and encourage all aldermen to support this motion that will result in a venue coming to life, uh, offering uh, um, eating choices for, for our residents, uh, building the economic uh, activity, building the employment activity, building the uh, night economy, uh, and all doing so in a planningly cogent and uh, sensible way. Uh, recommend support. Um, thanks, Alderman um, Walker. Um, so the motion before the chair is the amended recommendation, which involves 13 car parking positions rather than 15 on the basis of reassessed area of the application. The, uh, as Alderman Walker pointed out, the formula and calculations are all uh, been uh, unchanged. It's just the floor area that was changed. 
So uh, the recommendation is for approval, subject to conditions and advice, put over voting box. Uh, that's not reflected in what's on our screen in front of us. So just um, to, thank, that, thank you, Mayor um, and Alderman Blomley. I just wanted to make that point that the recommendation also includes the revised recommendation, which amends the cash in lieu contribution to reflect the matters that Alderman Walker was just referring to. So uh, the, the two are combined. Thank you. And, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So just to be clear, it's uh, 13 positions for cash in lieu. Um, so could I have a voting box, please? Uh, should be coming up now, Mayor. Mr Mayor, can you record a no from me? Uh, thank you, Alderman Mulder. We're missing one vote, Mayor. Ah, oh, there it is. Um, okay, uh, noting that Alderman Piers is not in the room, uh, we now the motion is carried. And could we invite Alderman Piers back in, please? Thank you, Mayor. Give me one moment. I've sent out an invite to call him back in. Alderman Piers is back in the room. Thank you. So item 11.3.2 is a development application at uh, 377 South Arm Road, Lauderdale, for a front, front fence. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Moved Alderman Mulder. Seconded Alderman Edmonds. Alderman uh, an eminently sensible um, suggestion and idea, and um, I uh, encourage support. Alderman uh, Edmonds. Uh, yeah, basically what Tony said, um, the report recommends approval and I think we uh, heard some of the other reasons that weren't necessary to be put forward in the um, deputation. Thank you. Alderman e Ewington. Oh, I was only going to um, second it, but I think enough's been said. It um, makes sense to me. Thank you. Alderman James. You're muted, Richard. Sorry, my apologies. Uh, my question is to Mr Lovell. On page 64, Mr Lovell, um, under the Rural Living Zone, it says it's proposed the development would have a front setback of, of at least five metres, which does not comply with the front setback prescribed by the acceptable solution of 20 metres for the buildings. Um, the only reference to that, as far as the performance criteria is concerned, is on page 65, the school, and that is the second paragraph on, 60, on page 65. The school includes a building that is set back approximately 10 metres from the South Arm Road. However, the school is subject to a different zone and the setback requirements. Could Mr Lovell explain, please, to the council as to why it doesn't comply with the 20 metres for building in that particular rural living zone? Please. Through Mr Mayor, the report was trying to make the point that, um, that it's consistent with other developments in the area other than the school, but, but that the, the, the impact of the school should be uh, lessened by the fact that it's in another zone and some distance away. Okay, thank you. Um, any other speakers? In that case, uh, right of reply, Alderman Mulder. Uh, enough said, Mr Mayor. Thank you. So the recommendation is that the uh, front fence be approved subject to conditions and advice. So uh, voting box, please. Uh, coming up in a moment, Mayor. It's up now. Record me as an aye, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Mulder. Is the voting box up yet? Please. Yes, it is. Well, I've only got Bayfield Street up on my little... Roll, roll down a little bit. All ah, thank you. Okay. 
the technology. Thanks, Mr. Nelson. Many thanks. Uh, that's carried unanimously. Moving on to 11.3.3, .3, development application at 28 Percy Street, Richmond for a 10 lot subdivision. Alderman Newington. Uh, take I'll, that I'll out. Sec that sec second at Alderman Chong. Alderman Newington. Um, yes, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, look, I think. Um, you know, anything that increases the housing stock and the, um, and tidies up the, uh, the infrastructure in the area and gives people the chance to live in a uh, lovely suburb like Richmond, uh, we should be supporting. And it seems that the guys have done the work to um, to uh, comply with all the schemes. So I would strongly encourage my fellow aldermen to um, to back this one in. Thank you, Alderman Chong. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think it's a very sensible um, application for this particular area. The amendment to the subdivision layout has, has made it a, a much better proposal, um, and I think we should support the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Alderman uh, Mulder. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I too am supportive of the thing, and I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased that um, we've got to where we are. But the issue arises again, and although it's dealt with in the report, I have concerns about this, as I did with the um, with the other development office at John Circle in this particular area, is that these areas are subject to inundation and they don't have the natural flow. And if they do, because of the level nature of them, it's a very, very slow flow and easily interrupted by uh, vegetation or, um, you know, it doesn't take much of a wall, retaining wall or, or some obstruction in the area to actually flood the land. And I think like, um, like with Richmond, we've missed an opportunity to here to come up with a comprehensive drainage plan for these areas. And, it's, and there are a number of them in the, um, in the Richmond village area where the land is basically flat um, and there is very little runoff until such stage as it becomes inundated. And I think that we, we really need to get with our stormwater management plan that we need to find a way of which, um, and, and there are lost opportunities here, the developers could be contributing to headworks charges that would allow us to move the water from these low-lying areas efficiently into the rivers rather than waiting for them to actually swell, flood up and actually have water laying on the areas. So apart from the fact that, once again, it's a missed opportunity, um, yeah, I support the motion. I support the uh, development. Thank you. Any other speakers? Um, right of reply then, uh, Alderman Newington. No, I'm fine. Thanks, Mr Mayor. So the motion is uh, for a 10-lot subdivision at 28 Percy Street. Recommendation is approval, subject to conditions and advice. May I have a voting box, please? It's up now, Mayor. Alderman Mulder, please. Aye. Thank you. Uh, the motion is carried, and could I uh, remind Alderman James that he declared an interest for the next item, please? Yeah, you're muted. Okay, thank you. Leaving, thank you. Uh, Alderman uh, James has left the meeting. So uh, the motion is uh, for a Bell Reef Beach Park. Um, for a, uh, a footpath works and landscaping. I note Alderman Ewington has put his hand up to move it. Do I have a seconder, please? Um, Alderman Blomley. Alderman Ewington. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, I'm very pleased to be sitting here tonight uh, recommending the approval of this next stage of the Bell Reef Beach Park. Um, I think we can all agree that the work that's been done over the years um, what, has, what part of it has been done has been very successful and very well welcomed by the community. The children's playground it certainly cops plenty of use and I was there a couple of times over the weekend and once again it was, uh, was very busy. Uh, but what that did show is that there are some issues in relation to the rest of the park that really needs to be sorted out. I mean, the fact that we've still got the old Asheville car park in there, which is one of the major things that's going to be rectified by this um, proposal. 
um, you know, just cleaning up the, you know, the, the, the rocks and the gravel and the, you know, the remnants of the car park and, and really getting some nice lawn in and around the, the playground and from the playground towards the beach, I think will make a huge difference to just the amenity of that local area. Um, you know, and I think the, the, the thing is too that I, I think we all have agreed that there certainly needs to be other um, consideration given to the master plan. Um, we've adopted a, a motion, uh, which I put up a couple of meetings ago, to, to look at that. And I think some of the representatives that have, um, you know, um, in, in this motion have clearly said to us that there's some issues there that we need to go back and relook at. So um, it's a bit um, strange that we then have the same people wanting to um, hold us back on, on moving forward all this and, and getting this part of it done. And I think this is just the start of what needs to happen. And I think... Um, you know, the fact that we're, um, you know, going to put some more picnic tables in there and get some washdown points um, for all the uh, ocean swimmers we've seen out in the water with the pontoon over the last few months, and it's been great to see that happen. But I think the fact that we need some uh, hot showers down there at some stage in the future is uh, something that I'd certainly look forward to as well. Um, you know, and the other thing is, I think, with the amount of people that we see on the uh, on the coastal trail and, and um, on the foreshore right, since the COVID lockdown and you know, it's been amazing to see how many people have been using it on a regular basis. And I said once again on the weekend, it was uh, bumper to bumper from one end to the other um, on both Saturday and Sunday, which was, which was fantastic. Um, and I think, you know, this is something that the community really looks forward to, to us doing because it's one of the major things that we do as a, as a council, which is provide these sort of spaces for people to get out and socially interact, um, engage with their family and friends and um, just get out and about and um, enjoy the fresh air and, and improve their health and well-being. So I think it's... Um, it's great that we've got this far. I mean, I'll just make one point here, Mr Mayor, but you'll probably tell me off for this, but I think the fact that we've got to go through a planning process to do something like this is an example of uh, the over-regulation of our lives. You know, we should be able to do something like this without having to go to this extent. But anyway, that's another You're matter. You're right, but, uh, Newton, We don't need you on your tub. <laughs> OK, I'll leave it alone there, but I just wanted to add that. But anyway, thanks, Mr Mayor, and I encourage my alderman to back this so we can get into, you know, finishing off this, this great project. Thank you, Alderman Blomley. Thank you, Mr there's a little more that I can add to uh, all of the reasons, but um, I thought them uh, wholeheartedly. I would like to say that um, it is important that, uh, that, we, that we do play that. Uh, Alderman Blomley, you are coming through in a very broken manner. If you could uh, modulate or attempt to, please. I support the motion. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Alderman Mulder. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I support the uh, the particular development, but I just have a question relating to the deputation. Now, I may not have heard correctly, but I thought the, uh, the gist of the deputation was that we should refuse this because the pathway didn't seem... Uh, Alderman Mulder, you've just hit the mute button there. Mr. Mayor, I actually didn't hit anything. I think there's an issue with the glitch that these things unmoot themselves. But um, anyway, um, I don't know where I was at, Mr. Mayor. My question uh, related to the deputation and the um, and the fact that a deputation was on the, in the, on the thing that this particular development should be refused because the pathway wasn't wide enough. Yet I look at the plans and it talks and it talks about a three metre wide concrete path, which I thought would be over engineered rather than too narrow. Could you just advise um, whether um, I've got the right uh, issue here, or is the um, is the is the deputy uh, mistaken? Uh, Mr. Graham, can you assist there, please? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, the the deputations have noted a, a Pitt and Sherry report which um, recommended a four and a half metre wide um, concrete path. Um, the path in the main area of the, um, uh, the picnic shelters is certainly wider than four and a half metres in that zone. And then it goes three metres um, width, I believe, probably to High Street, um, which we believe is uh, wide enough for the, the demand that will be there at this time. But that's not to say in the future that um, a further additional width on the footpath can be provided later on, um, should the demand um, show that it needs to Mr. be there. Mr Mayor, I'm not hearing anything here. Is it, is it? Uh, General Manager, can you uh, uh, re-invite Alderman Blomley back in, please? It appears as though there's a technical problem there. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll, um, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do that. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see what I can do, though. 
I, I think you can actually you have the option of uh, removing the participant and uh, inviting him back. Uh, did my answer come through clearly, Mr. Mayor? Well, it did to me, yes. Uh, I, I, Alderman Mulder, did you have sufficient enlightenment there in regard to your question? Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, yes, I'll just, um, I, I'll just go on to say I think three metres wide, three metres um, is sufficiently wide enough. Um, given the traffic, and I think that um, at three metres um, we can have people uh, comfortably uh, crossing the thing given the fact that um, in order to stay alive it seems we have to be at 1.5, so uh, we've got double the width there, so I think the pathway is quite adequate. Thank you. Uh, Mr Lovell, have you got a comment? Thanks, Mr Mayor. Can I just clarify that the reason it needs a permit is to do with the inundation prone areas code and the coastal hazard erosion zone, zone. so the uh, the width and uh, activities on the path per se are irrelevant to the assessment of the application in, Thank in you. terms of the um, planning scheme. Alderman Blomley, uh, welcome back. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I didn't hear any of the last uh, two minutes I was long. Um, I have some grave concerns about this system. It's just not adequate at all. I, I hate to say this, but I think it's your end because everyone else seems to be receiving okay. Mr Mayor, I've just actually installed a uh, extender for this very purpose. Um, I don't live in a castle, uh, but I understand the schools are needed. We need to get back in the chamber. Um, it's just not adequate to, to be logged out of meetings like this. So I'll leave that with you, but I expect in three weeks' time for us to be back in the chamber or meeting in person. This is just not adequate at all. All right, look, well, um, obviously we're all keen to get back into regular meetings if we can. In the meantime, if we can't, we'll certainly have the technicians uh, contact you to see if we can get a fix to it. All right. Um, now, uh, are there any other speakers on this motion concerning the Bellreath Beach Park? Uh, Alderman Pearce. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Look, I understand three metres wide footpath is quite adequate in a lot of cases. But as I've noticed, you know, with Cove and so on, a lot of people are out on certain tracks. And I think we should just have a second look at our very, very, very busy walkways, tracks and whatever. And maybe in certain circumstances, we do need to make them wider because when you've got pedestrian and bikes, and some of those bicycles are certainly moving, and some of those areas are extremely, extremely busy. And as Alderman Ewington said, Bell Reed Beach is a very busy area. I just think that some of our paths may need to be just a bit wider. Not all of them, but certainly some of them with high volumes of foot traffic and bike tracking. Bike track, bike <laughs> uh, tracing there. There's certainly a lot of action going on at the moment. And, uh, you know, I think... Three foot, three feet, three metres wide is fine in most cases, but I really think in some areas we really need to extend that. Thank you, Alderman Walker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and let me just reminisce a uh, a little bit with you because it was your good self and uh, the then Deputy Mayor uh, Jock Campbell that. Uh, when the first master plan iteration came before it, we were the ones that really thought the the, the car park was a massive conflict, and we we certainly uh, expressed that in, in the way we voted on that night. It's it's taken a while to get to this point where the actual residual asphalt's being um, dug up, but that is something to celebrate. Um, I am not going to get into the issue of the width. I, I note I note the representation and. And I do share some concern, but it's not around the concern of the width. The, the concern is around the conflict of, uh, you know, young kids being on the grass and then heading to the beach or coming from the beach and crossing over the path. It's not it's not the width of the path that's the concern. It, it's, it's the fact that um, we almost need a degree of calming around that when it comes to, to bikes and the potential conflict of just kids that, that really don't have... Um, you know the same vision uh, as adults when they're when they're, and they're often quite tunnel visage when they're going to places. So that's that's the conflict that concerns me rather than like a head-on smash between a jogger on one part of the park 
path and, and, and a cyclist on another or two cyclists. So uh, how that gets managed through the process will be something that I'll be, be paying particular uh, interest in. But, uh, you know, celebrating that we, you know, we were inching ever forward on, on the vision as originally touted in the master plan that was originally put before council uh, on that 2012 meeting. 2012, that long ago. Hmm. Um, any other speakers? In that case, uh, write a reply, Alderman Newington. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. I mean, look, you know, now's not the time to debate the width of the path, but I mean, the one little uh, point I will make is that, I mean, the, the opportunity to go back and revisit the master plan will give us a chance to look at, I mean, there's just not going to be one path through the middle of this whole park. I mean, I think there's going to be, you know, I think we all need to understand there's going to be paths going from different directions um, to link up different aspects of the things that we put in there. And, I th and with the promenade, uh, the beachfront promenade and those sort of things, there'd be plenty of opportunity to, to, to deal with that. I mean, I think, um, you know, pedestrian safety and the people moving between the different zones obviously be, need to be addressed in a little bit more detail. And I think the, um, you know, the traffic issues on Victoria Esplanade and cars opening doors onto the path um, are certainly legitimate things that we need to look at and the possibility of going one way and widening the path through there. I mean, they, they can all come. But just the one thing I... Um, um, and, and look, I encourage, it's been great that everyone supported this. I mean, the one thing... Um, that I, you know, encourage us all to do is to um, is to challenge each other to come up with, you know, making these places even better than what they already are. And I think this is certainly, a, a, you know, a great step in that direction. You know, I look forward to seeing um, and hearing everyone else's views in the future to to make it as good as it can be. Thank you. So the motion is that uh, uh, we approve the application for that pathway, subject to conditions and advice. Um, if we could have a voting box there, please. It's uh, up now, Mayor. Alderman Mulder, aye. Thank you. Okay, I have nine responses, two to come. Another 10 seconds. We're missing one, Mayor. I'll declare the motion carried and uh, invite Alderman James back into the room, please. Uh, the 10th has just come up. Uh, in that case, it's carried unanimously. I'll just all, all invite Alderman James back. Alderman James is back in the room, Mayor. Thank you. That concludes our business of planning authority. Um, there's uh, nothing to consider under customer service. Moving on to asset management, 11.5.1 1 uh, is uh, council identifies the major roads priority list and active transport issues. I note Alderman uh, Mulder has moved that. Alderman Pearce seconded it. Alderman Mulder. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And... Um by way of background, um, I, I um, would point out that this arose, the idea of reviewing our priorities arose from a, a motion that this council uh, moved some time ago. Mr Mayor, the, um, although I'm, um, you know, we've, we've had our debate and we've had our discussions and what has emerged is the consensus um, of the majority of our aldermen. But sometimes, Mr Mayor, the pol political naivety of local government beggars belief. The real reason for developing road priorities is to identify projects for, that uh, might be attractive for state and particular, particularly federal parties to take to an election in order for those levels of government to build projects that our ratepayers can't afford for themselves. It is appalling that we allow ourselves to be conned into putting forward the Mornington Roundabout as our number one priority, when this is actually a state government highway and it is their responsibility. There is no financial benefit to this council to have this at the top of our list. 
especially as it's not in the marginal seat and is unlikely to attract any support, the top priorities ought to be the Eastlands on off-ramps, followed by the Richmond Bypass, which will benefit the voters of the marginal seat of Lyons. Mornington Roundabout is problematic, and it should have been a multi-grade junction of this in the style of Acton Road Interchange, and that proposed for the airport. But that is not proposed. What is proposed is traffic signals, which will mean that evening peaks on South Arm Highway will be increased as Cambridge Road traffic is given increased access to the highway. However, the Eastlands on-ramp would actually solve the Cambridge Road problems. The roundabout works okay at the moment because the Bunnings lights are now causing the traffic at this point to pulse, but not, even, but not enough to manage the school peak on Cambridge Road. But can I point out that I actually walk this area quite frequently, and I'm often there at the time of the school, uh, of the, school uh, the St Killer um, pedestrians. Now, pedestrian access would be better facilitated by a pedestrian crossing or a keep clear area on the southern side of the, roundabout, of the current roundabout where cars must at least slow and they usually stop. As I said, I know this because I often use it myself in the mornings. And, and, and normally you have to weave through the cars, but there is no problem. At, and I know this from experience. A pedestrian crossing would prevent cars from obstructing the existing crossover, which actually has two DDA-compliant uh, cutouts inside the kerb where people can cross. The same cannot be said, of course, for the uh, northern side of the roundabout, which basically services the local hotel. Mr. Mayor, I'm happy for those for those um, for this uh, road to go through. Um, I always had concern about prioritising them in one, two, three, and four. But anyway, I'm sure that when approached by federal politicians, the mayor will the mayor is likely to um, suggest that the parties would be more. I would like to suggest to the mayor that the parties would be more interested, perhaps, in the ramps for the fleet of Franklin and Richmond for the seat of Lyons. I commend the motion anyway. Thank you, Mr. Alderman Pearce. Thank you, Mayor. The reason why I'm certainly supporting for the Mornington interchange upgrade is that's the complaint I get and I have over the years. And, uh, you know, not many people talk to me about ramps and, and other things down the list. That is always the number one priority. And I think we've, you know, we've had a workshop, we've got our list in order, and uh, I think that's the way we should go, and I certainly totally support it. Thank you. Other speakers? Alderman Jones? Uh, <coughs> thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, uh, I did pose a question to Mr Graham at our workshop, wrong, at our briefing on Friday, and um, the question was along these lines that, um, that the Mornington roundabout and also the uh, Rosney Park access or the Tasman Highway access ramps were, I thought, necessary to be done in conjunction with each other. And I thought that he was going to basically respond along those lines. Perhaps uh, before I make a, a contribution to the debate, would Mr Graham advise as to whether or not uh, he has any response to my question at Friday's briefing? Uh, uh, Graham, thank thank you for your question, Alderman James. Um, so, uh, planning for a, a um, council report at the next council meeting on the um, uh, Department of State Growth request for council to respond on their proposal for the Rosney access ramps. Um, the, the state government have informed us that um, um, the pre their preference is for the Rosney access ramps to be done. Um, not, not as a standalone project, but in terms of improvements across the network, including the Mornington interchange. Look, thank you for that. And that was basically where I was coming from in relation to uh, to this, because uh, and I am supportive of the revised list as listed on the agenda this evening. And, uh, and for that reason, uh, I can see that it's going to be some delay in which resolution of the Mornington interchange upgrade will be completed or be done without the access ramps being um, part and parcel of the process. 
May I say from the outset that the original proposal for the on-off ramps was, and I made it quite clear over the years, that access to the ramp from the Gordons Hill Road and a left turn past, obviously, onto the, Tas onto the Tasman Highway was the wrong, uh, wrong process. It was the wrong route in order to achieve that. And the revised pro, uh, process for those ramps, and I'm totally supportive of that because it, it does not uh, allow the hard work that the Gordons Hill Road Action Committee back in the 90s fought hard and fast for those uh, acts or for the access ramp not to be part and parcel of the Gordons Hill Road corridor onto the Tasman Highway. So having said that, it's important, I believe, that any work on the Mornington roundabout should be done in conjunction with the access ramps on the revised plan because otherwise we're going to go back to the modelling that happened about three or four years ago where the Department of State Growth threw its hands up in the air and just said, look, there are so many difficulties and problems, particularly with uh, trucks accessing or using the um, Mornington Road into Flagstaff Gully uh, uh, from the Hanson's Quarry. And there was no way in which there was any at the time, any means by which that could be addressed. So I look forward, uh, Mr Mayor, to um, what may come out of this workshop that Mr Graham is referring to in a, in a week or so's time, because on the basis of how to do something about uh, the problems in relation to the Mornington Roundabout, it, it has to be done in conjunction with the on-off ramps because I can see no way in which the department or the state government will do anything because if it's a standalone project, that's the Mornington Interchange is a standalone project, then it will be th still in the too hard basket unless the funds are made available for the access ramps. I support the, count, uh, the recommendation. Thank you, Alderman Edmonds. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, I don't disagree with a lot of the points made um, tonight uh, on this topic. Um, yeah, I, I agree with a bit of what uh, Alderman Mulder said about um, uh, this not necessarily being our um, roundabout, but it does impact a lot of our uh, roads. Um, I agree with the, the list. I think it was well worked through what we did to get to this point. I uh, agree with Alderman Pears that this is, like, this is one that gets brought up all the time. Um, I'll give a commitment tonight that every time I'm in a room with someone, whether it's at a forum or at a uh, meeting, that I'll bring it up. We've got two big elections coming up in two years or less. And I think this is, a t this is where the, 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 the bucks should come in from, um, from the uh, relevant major parties for both those elections, along with things like Lauderdale Primary School. So got my support 100% and, uh, you know, I look forward to hopefully with the 12 of us and everyone else in our city bringing up these things like Richmond Bypass, yes, for, uh, for our friends in, uh, sorry, our voters who are in the other electorate of Lyons uh, outside of Franklin, uh, that we can get some of this stuff committed to and create a bit of a bidding war because the last time I heard the Mornington Roundabout talked about was when there was a Pembroke uh, election, um, what, 18 months ago, and I saw it, there's been some announcements about studies of it, etc., that I could find with a quick Google from uh, the previous infrastructure minister, but I haven't heard of that being released. Uh, someone might be able to correct me there. So... I just think we've got to keep the pressure on. Um, putting it at the top of the list is the best way to do it. And uh, when it comes time to lobby, I'm sure we'll all be doing our best to get some real money committed to fixing, like, a generational issue here. It's not going to get any better without people putting some serious coin into it. And I take points around, um, uh, you know, workarounds and things like that, uh, you know, ways for people to sort of scoot across, et cetera. But... Um, 
fair, you, there's got to be some fair income commitment made to this. And what a great deputation to get, like someone who's actually deals with this every day and isn't in the privileged position of at least being able to whinge about the traffic. I mean, seriously. So, yeah, uh, I'm 100% on board. I hope something gets done and I'll do everything I can to try and make something get done. Thanks, Earl Maiden. It's Earl Warren. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, look, I will be supporting this motion, but really just for the Mornington interchange. I don't really care about the rest of the roads. Um, I think that we've spent an inordinate amount of time discussing priorities over something that we don't necessarily have any control over. And they're all, well, the, um, we, we've all heard the old adage that you don't solve traffic problems by building more roads and larger roads. The Mornington Interchange is um, a debacle. Thank you to Mr Thomas Chick for his excellent deputation. And might I also say, isn't it wonderful to have this online forum that allows people to have a much greater um, part in democracy and be able to watch and interact with the meeting? Um, um, I think that the other uh, roads uh, are things that are not necessarily... Um, the only solutions, we, we have to look at public transport, proper public transport, getting people out of cars and into um, sensible, frequent, affordable public transport um, would be a much cheaper solution than building lots of four-lane highways. Um, so I recommend um, certainly endorse um, Part B, which is to increase the um, active transport with bus stop pedestrian um, bicycle access improvements, multi-user pathways, and so on. Um, so I'm, I'll be voting on the basis of the very first dot point in Part A and Part B, and I'm not really that bothered about the rest because I don't think they are solutions. Thank you, Alderman Warren. Alderman Von Berto. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, I request that we actually deal with Part A and Part B ad seriatim, and the reason for that is that they are quite different considerations. Is that possible? Um, look, I'll, I, I can, we can do it that way if you like. It's two it's, voting boxes. Let's, we'll do it part that way. It's Thank a bit you. late in the process now, isn't it? No, it doesn't, doesn't make much difference. Uh, we're, procedurally, it's quite easy to do. Oh, I'd like to speak to Part A, Mr Mayor. Uh, I can't support the priorities in that order, uh, and that's primarily in relation to Flagstaff Gully Link Road connection to East Derwent Highway. When we had a workshop recently on the 6th of July, the gentleman from the Department of State Growth made it very clear that the strategic modelling for Flagstaff Gully Link Road is out of date and that there would be a review of that later this year and that at present a consultant has not actually been chosen. And so that strategic modelling won't occur until at least August this year and that will include costings. So I can't uh, support this without knowing what the ramifications are, what the options are and what the costs are to council, uh, if there are going to be costs to council. And certainly in the past there has been discussion about the state and council funding uh, such a link and to the tune of many millions of dollars. So I cannot support the priorities as they stand at the moment without that information and evidence. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Blomley. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, uh, Mr Mayor, like uh, the majority of other speakers, uh, um, the recommendation, um, both parts A and B before us this evening, and uh, obviously at our 6th July of, uh, discussion and consideration uh, was had to order um, these priorities uh, in what's before us. Um, if, we're, if, this, if we're able to appropriately address the Mornington interchange uh, upgrade by, by next month, um, that would be absolutely fantastic. And then I suppose it gives us a couple of other projects before we actually head down to Flagstaff Gully Link Road connection to the East Derwent Highway. I do take on board um, the very sensible contribution by Alderman Bomberto 
um, that uh, there is um, some updated modelling to be provided for that particular uh, project. But I think, yeah, you know, when we've got an opportunity to actually put forward, if you like, our wish list, we ought to do that, and we ought to do that uh, very firmly um, and, and back ourselves. Um, if we were able to uh, appropriately address the Mornington uh, roundabout, uh, deliver for the people of this uh, of this city and also the other southeastern communities that use it on a daily basis, that in itself, I think we could all pat ourselves on the back and say, what a fantastic job, because as I said on the 6th of July, and as has been raised by other speakers here this evening, uh, this has been an issue that has been raised every electoral cycle, and all of it Edmonds references two big elections. I'd say there's three, because I'd also include local government in that as well. But I can recall uh, election campaign was Alison Ritchie, uh, the late uh, Dr. Uh, Goodwin, Jay Seeker, uh, David O'Byrne. I mean, every person, uh, every political candidate wants to come out and bang the drum on this issue. Wouldn't it be great if Clarence City Council actually bit the bullet and, and was able to say this is our number one priority as we're prioritised here following our discussion uh, on the 6th of July? And if we were able to deliver that one solution within the next two years, uh, I, I think that uh, we could all hold our heads high when we go back to the electors of our city in two years' time and say, look, we've achieved something. We've actually delivered the solution that you all, for so many years now, have been calling for. So um, with those few words, Mr Mayor, I'm very happy to support both parts A and B of the Office of Recommendation. Thank you. Ottoman Walker. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, while it's in my head, I'll uh, note the comments of Alderman Von Berto and acknowledge her consistency on the Flagstaff Gully Link Road through the whole time. I don't agree with that position, but uh, again, the consistency is, is noted on the issue because there have been some different positions held by different people over the time. Um, this list is a list devised, constructed and voted on by a committee. So none of us are going to think it's in the right order. Um, I certainly, you know, we're, we're, we're either dictator, if we look at the um, the active and passive uh, transport component, I would I would have the Oak Downs to Lauderdale multi-user pathway as the number one. Uh, I, I really would. That, that area is a phenomenal problem and uh, it's it's not nebulous, unlike talking about all these different bus stops and pedestrian things here and there. It's, there's a problem you have. There's a solution. That is why it's needed. It's a very succinct story to talk to uh, busy people uh, on the hunt uh, it, through the carnival of democracy at state and federal levels. Um, but the good thing about this list is it's, if you like, a menu of, of issues for the Clarence community uh, that also affect wider surrounding areas that we can present and being the representatives that deal with people every every day, we're in a better position to explain it. And anyone that's door knocked will, will, will note the grief you get for uh, the state of how councils kept the uh, you know the Tasman Highway or or councils' ridiculous Mornington roundabout. All these state things are issues that are fed onto us, and in some cases perceived as our our, our assets that we're. we're um, not 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 maintaining or, or should should rectify, but if we can have those conversations succinctly. Uh, we've got a list, so we've got some things around it. That's great, um, and, and yeah, it's it's aspirational in, in some components. Uh, there are twenty nine councils in Tasmania, and I won't talk about what the right number of that is. But what I can say is another number is the number eleven. Uh, 11% of Tasmanians are living in Clarence, and in fact, it's probably now closer to 12%, or it's certainly heading towards that. Um, you'll hear the chirping from council saying, oh, we've got the uh, you know fastest rate of growth. You know, it's something that I hear from a variety of councils talking about. Well, good on you. You can, you can have the participation price, but the actual volume volumetric number of population increase, is, it's within Clarence. It, it, it's... Um, it's the message that we have to be getting out as well and, and loudly that, you know, there is there is the issues now, but there is the growth and, and we really want to help manage it or, you know, and, 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 and be looking forward, not, not constantly trying to say here's a problem that we could have addressed, um, you know, going back. So is the list in the right order? Not for any of us, but they're all worthy projects, I would say, and, and um, you know, seek council support. 
Thank you, Alderman Walker. Are there any other speakers? Take the right to reply, Alderman Mulder. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, and I uh, thank everyone for their contributions. Um, I think we're all on the same page, and I think uh, I think Alderman jo uh, Walker probably summed it up best by saying, once again, it's a list comprised by a committee, and um, I'm for that, and we can argue about, uh, till the cows come home, as we've done, about what should be the top and what should be the bottom. Um, the bottom line, the fact is, is that it's a list. And it's not for us if we're going to be uh, going down there to, we, we can say these are our number one priorities, but I can assure you that the number one priorities um, will be what those, if we are, someone else is going to pay for it, the number one priority will be with what they think they can sell to their voters. So um, that's fine and let them, let that be the consequence. The point is, is that we have got a revised list We've got a project on there that wasn't there before, which I think is uh, is very appropriate. Now, um, in terms of the Flagstaff Gully modelling, there's no reason that can't be on the list. And the modelling is the modelling may be out of date because it's um, it, it, it relates back to a period when I was uh, on council the last time, so it's probably at least a, a good ten or more years old. But at that stage, there was a cost-benefit analysis, a cost-benefit return of constructing that link of 2.2. Compare that to the Bridgewater Bridge, which is only going to return half a dollar for every dollar spent on it. Now, the Flagstaff Gully Link is not going to get a worse return. It's only going to get better. So I'm, um, I'm of the view that I'm quite confident that the traffic modelling. A lot of this modelling, as we've seen from this, is an exercise in... The government is, will be looking at what is the most effective. That's the job of the bureaucrats. The ramps at uh, Gordons Hill Road, they did say that they were not uh, going to make recommend them to the minister, and that's, that's their say. But what I heard them say was that the uh, ramps were only of benefit to local traffic, particularly Cambridge Road. That's what actually was said. For that... You can use that, my friends, is code for let council pay for it if they want it because that's their benefit. This is the state government saying we will pay for what we want to pay for and that is the point. So all I can say is this. If we're really serious about these roads and we want to take advantage of opportunities, the thing that parties and, uh, and people in, uh, in pre-election mode are looking for are shovel-ready projects. Not one of these projects, I think, is shovel-ready. I may be wrong, but we need to get them in the shovel-ready. So in, in, re in response to that, um, I perhaps foreshadow a motion that we really need to get our act together. Thank you, Alderman Mulder. Um, so we are dealing with them uh, ad seriatim. Um, the next vote will be on 11.5.1a, uh, which is our uh, road priority issues. If I could have a voting box for that, please, General Manager. Uh, thanks, Mayor. It should be coming up momentarily. Alderman Mulder, aye. Thank you. Should be up now. It's just come up, Mayor. So, um, item A, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the motion is carried and item B deals with active transport priorities um, which include uh, the bus stop, pedestrian, bicycle access movements, Oak Downs, Lauderdale, multi-user pathway, and so on. Uh, if I could have another box for that, please. Does that include ferries, Mr Mayor? Uh, it doesn't because they uh, don't constitute active transport, I guess, Alderman Blomley. You know, they're an it's alternative. It's up, up now, Mayor. I don't know if you ride your bike to it. Mr. Mayor, I will be a no on this one um, on the basis of the um, 
Sorry, Mr. Mayor, I'll be a yes on this one, sorry. Thank you. Uh, I have two outstanding. Ten seconds. Uh, the motion is carried. Um, moving on to the next item, which is 11.5.2, Victoria Esplanade and Kangaroo Bluff Reserve Master Plan. The proposal recommendation is we reallocate funds to uh, fund that uh, master plan. Uh, moved, Alderman Walker, I think. Seconded, Alderman Newington. Alderman Walker. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, um, the, the the funding works is, is um, being put out for, for a comprehensive master plan and the, the rationale being that, that uh, some of these items might not actually form part of the, the new plan when it's done. Uh, from the community's point of view, um, this is perhaps overdue, and I can understand a, a sense of uh, somewhat frustration, but the, the end result is going to be so much better than if we just left things the way they were before us in 2019. Um, we can allocate two days to be talking about whether we put the fort in or out and still not arrive at a decision. And this, uh, the way that this motion is constructed uh, allows us not to get bogged down in that war. It's a separate sort of thing that can be carried on and progressed separately and could potentially be, be dovetailed in. But the really important thing about this is we're getting on with the process uh, and, work, and working on what is, you know, I think the signature stroll uh, in our municipality uh, and a linchpin for, for helping to also bring people over here, but also those that are, are really making the most of this area. So... Um, it is an area that is widely used, not just by the local community, but but you know from far and wide within Clarence and and you know the greater um, Southern Taz area, and it is worthy of of not a quick job, uh, but but an actual thorough, comprehensive thing to 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 let this area shine to its true potential. So one more year in, and I'll be you know banging down the doors to make sure when the plan is done that the that the funding, uh, commensurate funding is also approved in the following budget, as I'm sure will other aldermen. So I seek your support. Oh. Mr Mayor, oh, did you mention my name then? No? You're on mute, man. Still on mute. Um, I had you down as a second, uh, Alderman Newington. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Um, look, I certainly think James summed it up there. I mean, I think there's some things changed over the last few years in relation to... Um, Victoria Esplanade, I mean, we've got the ferries coming online, we've got the apartments that hopefully will be uh, something we'll be considering in the next few um, months down in Kangaroo Bay. I mean, the hotel itself, the work that we've got to do at Bell Reef Beach Park. I mean, changes that have occurred through COVID and, and you know, public changes in public behaviour. Uh, the tourism possibilities, and I think, you know, as, as uh, Alderman Walker said there, I mean, the, the, prem, the premium um, walk that we've got in our, in our city is, is certainly the waterfront area. Um, in and around that location and trying to tile that in with some of the commercial opportunities I think we've got to look carefully at um, for Bell Reef Village itself. I think that's a big part of what we need to do as well. You know, I mean, that's one of the failings that, I, that I've you know, mentioned a few times about our coastal trail. We've, we've got a fantastic trail, but we've never sat down and thought about how do we actually encourage businesses to take advantage of those people that are, that are using that trail and add to the experience that um, the people can have while they're using it. And I think this master planning process and linking in with what we do with the park and then even all the way through to Wentworth Park and Harrow Beach, I think it gives us a great opportunity to really do some, um, some planning for the future. I suppose my big concern is whether we've got the, uh, the funding to do it all, but, uh, you know, if we don't do the planning, we're certainly not going to be in a position to, um, you know, to come up with some really good ideas that I think the community will really welcome. So I encourage everyone to support this and um, get the ball rolling. Thank you. Alderman James? Yeah, look, it's on again, off again, uh, this proposal. And uh, I think, in a nutshell, we've let down the community because on the basis of 
basically deferring this this project out and and Alderman Walker's comments about he'll be there banging down the door in about 12 months time is is, is nonsense because he, there's been a, a discussion with the community and it's been identified of some of the key things that need to be addressed and they are basically the irrigation the um, some minor road works and 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 also some re, uh, rejuvenation of the of the of the walkways up oh, the grass on the walkways and by the very nature of allowing this to have a, a review of the plan and also to to encapsulate the kangaroo bay master plan uh, the kangaroo bay um, master plan or can wrong kangaroo bluff master plan it just goes a long way down the track to identify on page 135 and on uh, 2.5 that the proposed leasing of the fort site will not only increase open space within Bell Reeve, it will provide a destination location that contributes significantly to the city's vi vibrancy and cultural depth, unquote. Now, look, we have made no decision, uh, although the mayor has made comment that he, I think, is in support of us taking over the Bell Reeve um, bluff Fort. Uh, that, uh, point of that, order, has, Alderman James. Yeah, point of order. That has, that, that, that has not been. I'd ask you to retract that. That hasn't been decided yet, Mr. Mayor. And Alderman I'm, James, I'm, would you please listen to me for a moment? You've made an allegation that I've made a decision on that. I have not. I've not expressed a preference for it. I'm waiting for a report back to Council, and until then, I'll have my mind open on it. Yeah, well, there's no decision. That's fine. But okay. what I'm saying, what I'm saying, Mr. Mayor, in this situation, that the funds now will be basically reallocated to a revised um, plan, uh, which will incorporate the Kangaroo Bluff Fort, and I don't believe that is relevant to what was proposed in the early decision of council, and and also to the fact of the matter is that three hundred ninety thousand dollars on this project, together with the 2.5 million on the uh, Bell Reeve um, uh, play park, and also the uh, 350,000 on the, on the boardwalk at Bell Reeve. Look, for heaven's sakes, we've been crying out to try to distribute a lot of the funds across the city, but here we are spending a bucket of money on another revised master plan. So what are we after? having revised plans, master plans for this, just to be able to make a decision. I th think that we've let down the community by the very nature of dragging this process out. And over the time, it will mean that they may lose interest and say, well, council did promise us an early decision on these minor works on Victoria Esplanade. And what have we done? We've basically backtracked and said, we want to revise the master plan and throw the Bell Reef Bluff in for good measure. For that reason, I will not support this because I believe that the people in Bell Reeve, and we had a meeting with them. I know a number of the aldermen have had meetings with residents on uh, in on at the site on the Victoria Esplanade, and they are of the view that something ought to be done. Now it's being dragged out, and uh, and quite frankly, for those reasons, I cannot support the motion. Thank you, Alderman James, Alderman Mulder. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and um, um, I'm uh, more than happy to suggest that the uh, the Kangaroo Bluff uh, Reserve Fort site um, ought to be included into this uh, particular project, um, and, uh, and and I do so on the basis that um, you know as we seek to bounce back from tourism, um, apart from Richmond, we don't have any tourist sites in uh, on, on the in, in Clarence uh, that we've developed. And, um, and here is a classic one, as well as the Risdon um, Cove uh, facility. But um, my real question in, in relation to this particular um, um, project is that um, $390,700, um, is that intended to, um, is that just a shift of internal resources or is that the kind of money that we're offering to uh, consultants to develop this particular plan. Uh, Mr. Graham, perhaps you could enlighten us there, please. 
Uh, through Mr. Mayor, um, it's a mixture of um, external resources in terms of um, survey, uh, landscape architect, and um, other external resources to undertake these sets of works. It is listed on our uh, in our report. I'm just going through that. Um, on item 2.8 um, talks about um, where, where the costings are uh, looking at, at heading towards in terms of undertaking the work. Thank you. Autumn Mulder. Oh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I, I must say that concerns me somewhat because I'm, I'm sure and I've seen plenty of, effort, plenty of um, evidence that a lot of this type of um, concept design work and engineering work is well within the capabilities and capacities of, uh, of some of our council um, and, uh, you know, and we have highly qualified people that should be capable of doing some of this work. However, um, as we all uh, rush out to uh, feed the, uh, to, to pour our hard-earned ratepayers dollars into the consultancy trough, um, I am reminded of Boyle's, of the uh, Boyle's law, as, um, which normally applies to gases. But in terms of project, um, there's a regular uh, thing in project management called that a project will expand to fit the, fun fit the funds allocated to it. I noticed that um, that uh, at 7.2 on page 139 that said these funds can be allocated to the development of the master plan with residual funds contributing towards the implementation of stage one. I sure look forward to seeing the quantum of those residual funds. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Uh, Alderman Pearce. Mayor, like some other aldermen, I'm disappointed that we're taking money away from Victoria Esplanade. And uh, as most people know, I think I'm not in favour of the Kangaroo Bluff Fort. I think that's just absolute money going down the drain because so much work needs to be done. Look, Victoria Esplanade needs some, some work done on it now. And now, again, when I read this, I thought, why? And as one of the previous aldermen said, uh, People met with residents down there. We know work needs to be done there. Now we're just taking money away. I just cannot support this. I, I just think it's silly. I really do. Thank you. Other speakers? Right of reply, Alderman Walker. It's a democratic process. We all get to say our bit and we all get to make our vote. Um, just, just a couple of points, though, and I, and I agree with Alderman Pierce on the fort. I have grave concerns about that, and uh, this isn't committing us to getting into the fort business. It really isn't. Um, there's a variety of views and mixed views on the council, and this is a way that we can advance and help Victoria Esplanade and the Bluff get to its full potential with or without the fort being part of it. That's a separate little debate that we'll keep having amongst ourselves. Um, but I just really want to talk about the UBUT Clarence Special, which is get it done, yeah, tidy up around the edges and on you go. And and to be honest, you know, I've got to say that we had pretty mediocre play equipment when we first came to this, uh, when I first got onto council. There's a lot of areas where we were deficient. Uh, we have so much natural endowment and beauty uh, and we we are often reluctant to, to to make the most of it for people to enjoy because it's it's easy just to do a, a, a quick and mediocre job. And that actually is what I believe the 2013 um, landscape plan for this area was. And that's why I voted against it. And I think I've been shown to be right on on uh, on, on how that, that plan went. So, yes, this does involve spending some money. Uh, but I think that this area that is enjoyed by such a wide variety of our community, not just those that live in the immediate area, is worthy of getting right and getting right for the long term, not just a patch up of some irrigation and a bit of a tart up of a, of a car park. If you feel that way, that's great. You can vote against it. But I'd urge those uh, that, that, that realise its its true potential to to get on board and back the, back the motion as is before us. Uh, thank you. So the motion before the chair is that we reallocate funds to facilitate the Victoria Esplanade and Kangaroo Bluff Reserve Master Plan. If I could have a voting box on that, please. Alderman Mulder, aye. Thank you. Uh, 10 seconds, one outstanding. I'll call
call the motion carried. That's and 11, uh, Mayor. We've thank you. Uh, so the motion is carried. Moving on to item 12, Alderman's question time. There are no matters on notice. 12.3 answers questions uh, without notice at the previous meeting, taken as read. Our answers are in the agenda papers there. Uh, moving on to questions without notice. If I could start with the Deputy Mayor, please, Alderman Chong. Um, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Two questions. Um, the first one is, do we have a date yet in relation to the opening of the Cambridge Bypass? The general manager. A question. Um, Mayor, if uh, I might ask uh, Mr. Graham to uh, answer that. Uh, through Mr. Mayor, I haven't received formal advice from the Department of State Growth in terms of a formal opening time, but um, I, I will in inquire and advise Alderman. Thank you. And the second one, Alderman Chong. And the second one, uh, I guess, sadly, is in, in relation to where we stand in our preparedness if we do have a, a second incident of um, COVID-19, a second wave. I note, looking following on from Victoria, and we have our first case again back in Tasmania today. Um, obviously, we don't want to go down the whole business recovery plan again, but where we are in terms of readiness. Uh Thank you, uh, Alderman Chong. Um, we, uh, around about two to three weeks ago, started a review process um, in preparation for the possibility of a second wave. Uh, we're looking at well, what worked and uh, what didn't work, but also where we might need to uh, resource in terms of supplies and, and such like. So um, I'm hoping to have that uh, that uh, plan revised and updated and um, within the next week. Alderman Blomley? No, thank you, Mr Mayor. Alderman Edmonds? Uh, thank you. Uh, first one, um, saw some news today about possible games of uh, football at uh, our stadium in Bell Reeve. I just wondered, has the council been involved in any talks <coughs> regarding uh, that? The planning? The Mayor hasn't, uh, General Manager. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, I uh, received a phone call at around about 11 o'clock today letting me know that um, an article had appeared on in the Mercury Online. Um, at that stage, um, the uh, TCA, I understand, was in contact or getting in contact with the football club, uh, the Clarence uh, Football Club, and uh, we've been working between uh, the club and the TCA uh, to see how any uh, outcome can be accommodated. Um, there's, as I understand things at the moment, um, matches uh, are proposed for August, commencing on the 1st of, of August, but um, that hasn't been finally confirmed yet. Um, I also understand that part of the arrangements hinge upon um, the technicians from Sydney coming down and being able to remove the site screen infrastructure before anything can happen. A second question, Alderman Edwards. Yeah, thank you. Um, thanks for the answer. Uh, yeah, this one's uh, from about a month ago. The, um, the Prime Minister uh, held a press conference talking about um, a sophisticated state-based cyber actor. And I'll just quote a couple of things that he said. He said, this activity is targeting... Australian organisations across a range of sectors, including all levels of government. Um, he goes on to say, we know it's a state-based uh, cyber actor because of the scale and nature of the targeting and tradecraft used. Uh, he then goes on to say that the, um, the government's expert agency on cyber matters is the Australian Cyber Security Centre, and it's published a range of technical advisory notes in recent times, uh, and they'll be alerting potential targets uh, and briefing states and territories, although he doesn't mention all levels of government there. I just wondered, has anything come through to, to us? Because obviously I haven't seen anything as an alderman about whether the comments of the Prime Minister about all levels of government, whether we've had any briefings or any kind of updates to our security or any advice along that, that front that's uh, come through from the uh, federal government or its agencies? Um, thanks for the uh, question, Alderman Edmonds. Um, we um, are part of um, a group um, that uh, ultimately links through to those centralised agencies in terms of updates and information. So we do receive that information from an operational perspective. 
Um, we've recently updated our uh, firewall and other protection systems. Uh, so we're comfortable at this point that we're as well prepared as we possibly can be. Um, and those, uh, those protections are regularly tested uh, as well as being updated. So um, yes, we do receive information. Um, we, um, it's an operational matter for the most part. Um, but we do keep ourselves appraised of uh, any uh, significant incidents that, uh, that do occur from the government's point of view. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, Alderman Newington. No, I'm fine. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Alderman James. You're muted. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr Mayor, my question concerns the stalled development of the hotel and hospitality school proposal. You muted yourself there halfway through. My question concerns the stalled development of the hotel and hospitality school proposed for Kangaroo Bay. Has the developer applied for a building and plumbing permit? And if not, has any indication been given of when they will do so? Uh, General Manager. Um, thank you for the question. Um, the, uh, we're in regular contact. Um, the discussions at this point in time are, are at the DA level. I'm not aware of any detailed plans having been submitted uh, in terms of building or plumbing. Um, so at this point in time, I'm not sure I can give any further advice or update on uh, on where that development is at this point. Thank you. Did you have a second question, Alderman Judge? You muted again. Yeah, I don't know what's happening here because I'm certainly not demuting myself. I think there might be uh, extraterrestrial activity here on that that's on that on that space. Uh, my second question is in relation to. Um, You've been dropped out again. I'm not sure what's going on. Well, I've got up here that it's um, your muting has been turned on by an exterior source. So look, I'll I'll have to. I'll, it's a for, it's I'll a ask for an actor, Alderman James. <laughs> yeah, well, it's something going on there, and uh, um, they don't really want to hear me. But I hope the electorate does. I, I didn't know but, I had that control. <laughs> well. It's, Someone has outside, Luke, and uh, Luke, you could have got the question in by now, Alderman James. Yep. Okay. The question is that was asked earlier this evening: Is the Clarence City Council aware that the rescheduled dates for the REMPAT hearing uh, are the seventh and the eleventh of September, two thousand and twenty? Uh, I've answered that question, Alderman James. Well, I couldn't hear it. I couldn't hear the answer, so I was asking if that, that could be. Responded to again, please. Yes is the answer. Thank you. Great. Um, Thanks. Alderman Kendi. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And uh, through you to um, Mr Graham. Um, and just a, a quick question. With some of the development activity underway at Seven Mile Beach at the moment, including the Aqua Place subdivision, um, which has resulted in a quite a significant increase in traffic movements. Can you please um, provide for me and some of the uh, residents here an update on the works that have been planned for Woodhurst Road? Uh, Mr Gray? Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, the, the works on Woodhurst Road, uh, have uh, the design's actually gone on hold uh, at the moment. Um, we're just assessing our road reconstruction program out of the major dig-out program for this financial year. Um, but I'll, I'll further follow up and, uh, and inform Alderman Kennedy on the status of, of that project. Uh, and I think uh, she was generally interested in Seven Mile Beach projects uh, overall. Was that correct, Alderman Kennedy? Yes. Um, if you could please note that, Mr Graham. Yep, I'll follow up. And uh, perhaps we could, you could copy the other Alderman in, yep. uh, in that information as well? Certainly will. Thank you. Did you have a second question, Alderman Kennedy? Uh, I did, but uh, Alderman Chong got in first, so thank you very much for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alderman Mulder. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The um, owner of the Rokeby IGA wishes to place road signage on South Arm Highway, similar to that which exists on many roads, in, especially including Cambridge Road at Warrain. 
So, Mr Mayor, what is this process for gaining planning approval for highway signage to support this local business? Uh, Mr Gr uh, Lovell, can you help us there, please? Through you, Mr Mayor, um, it's actually not a planning matter. Um, uh, roadside signage is, uh, is uh, possibly an asset management issue that Mr Graham might add to, but he might also say it's a state roads issue, so I'll just pass it over to him. Uh, so, can you just confirm that uh, planning approval is not required for a roadside sign? No, no, roadside signs don't come under the planning scheme. Thank you. Mr Graham, can you help there? Uh, yes, I thought with the state road, it would be um, Department of State Growth's responsibility in terms of um, what signage goes on their road reservation. Uh, but we can inquire with them and advise Alderman Mulder. Mr Mayor, to, to follow on from that, um, first of all, I asked this simple question um, on the 7th of June and again on the 30th of June, and it's taken, um, you know, I'm going to go to a formal council meeting to get what is basically a, a, a simple response. But the issue also arises is that the place for this site, that under the Roads and Jetties Act, the verges, what goes on on the verges of highways is actually a council matter um, under the Roads and Jetties Act, and no doubt Dyer would want to be consulted, uh, but also the area in question is actually the, the, the verge between uh, West Grange Road and South Arm Highway. So that bit of road there, the, the, the bit of grass area there, is actually both, um, you know, it, it, I'm not sure, but whatever it is, his council would have a responsibility. So all I'm after is what's the process? Does this guy apply to us or does he apply to the Department of State Growth for permission to put a simple road sign up? Uh, Mr Graham? I'll follow through, uh, Mr Mayor, and advise of the um, procedure required. Uh, Alderman perhaps um, we, we could get a specific place that this uh, person has in mind so we can ascertain whose boundary, whether it's in our land or, or the state government's land. Uh, Mr Mayor, I'm sure it's um, it would be state government land, but... Um, as I said, the Roads and Jetties Act gives us responsibility for uh, for stuff on the side of the road. But anyway, I look forward to the response, uh, and hopefully it doesn't take two months. Thank you very much. Did you have a second question, sorry? That was a second question, me. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I won't offer you a third. I'd be in trouble. Alderman Pearce. No, thank you, Mayor. I had my questions uh, answered by staff this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Von Berto. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, Mr Mayor, as part of the background to Council's proposed coastal erosion policy, could Council be apprised of the issues and possible solutions related to the recent large storm, which has eroded the Wamberal Beach and caused major damage to several houses in the Central Coast Council, New South Wales. GM. Uh, thank you for the question, Alderman Von Berto. Um, we are planning to bring a uh, coastal policy to Alderman to discuss at a workshop um, during August. Um, Mr L um, Graham will correct me if my timing is wrong on that. Um, and that coastal policy will talk about strategy priorities for dealing with issues uh, which include coastal erosion and storm damage. Thank you. Did you have a second question, Alderman Von Berto? Uh, yes, Mr Mayor. Uh, I don't believe my first question has been answered. Could that actually be included? Could we be apprised of that situation and the possible solutions or actual solutions that take place because that's important in terms of our issues that we have as far as coastal erosion is concerned. Um, thank you. Sorry, I thought, uh, Alderman Von Berto, I had answered your question in the context that um, we, uh, the coastal policy that we are drafting and have drafted um, we'll deal with those sort of storm events and how they might be responded to. Um, and you'll appreciate that in some circumstances there are very few viable options available. Thank you. Thank you. And Autumn Walker. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I have two questions. The first one... Um, sorry, 
Alderman Walker first, and then I'll come to Hi. you, Alderman Warren. Not a worry. Um, look, I note the recent uh, Facebook post uh, in relation to the COVID affecting um, dogs in the dog park. Uh, I guess my clumsy question is, is around, can I have an update about um, how that situation is evolving and, and what extra measures um, we're putting in place to try and uh, decrease the risk for, for dog owners? Uh, GM, or if uh, you got an, uh, a senior officer here from that area? Uh, I'm not sure that I do, um, um, Mayor. So I'll, uh, if it's OK, I'll take that one on notice and we'll provide advice as soon as possible so that Alderman can be appraised of that as it evolves. Was there I'll, a second question? No, I'll leave it at one. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Warren? Um, before I start, Mr Mayor, can I just add that the coronavirus for dogs is not the same as the one that we're dealing with for people. It's fairly common. We have had it in the past. It's not connected to the current pandemic, just for the public's peace of mind while we wait for the answer to that question. Uh, my two questions, the first one is uh, through you to the general manager, is one of timing and process. So I just want some clarity um, we've been looking at the local provisions um, for the planning scheme and before us we have um, a proposal to change the zoning of Rosney Hill Nature Recreation Area. Given that that is a matter that is currently before RUMPAT, um, I'm just wondering how that fits in with us voting on that particular rezoning when I believe the rezoning is probably one of the contested points. So if the general manager could just clarify that for me. Um, thank you, Alderman Warren. I might ask Mr Lovell to uh, provide uh, a response from a planning um, perspective in terms of the LPS. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, the, yes, it's correct that the council's dealing with the zoning of that property, but also every other property in the city as part of the LPS yet to come to council. However, um, it has, the fact there's an appeal or a permit, uh, uh, or whatever it happens to be at the, at the time that the, that the scheme is processed, has no bearing on how you deal with the, the, these matters. They're both separate. One relates to a current DA, uh, which is subject to appeal. The other relates to a planning scheme. Um, at any time a planning scheme is being assessed by a council or by the uh, commission, there is invariably many planning applications in train. So it would be impossible, to, for example, to, to not process a planning scheme um, because there are permits in play. Uh, Mr Lovell, if you could also confirm, please, that um, the, the tribunal, as a council would, is required to assess it against the scheme in place at the application? Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry, Mr Mayor, that's correct. Yes, um, the Act was amended several years ago to ensure that the tribunal considers the application against the planning scheme that exists on the on the day that that uh, that the decision was made. So there is no impact uh, as a, uh, on on the uh, assessment of the appeal uh, by the, um, the the mooted planning scheme at any point. Thank you, that's helpful. Uh, my second point, um, just to follow on from um, Alderman Edmonds' um, question and the general manager's excellent response to do with um, cyber um, crime and so on. Um, as part of the Clarence Council response to that, um, can the general manager please reassure me that there will also be um, education available for officers and aldermen because we all know that the weakest link is often the user and people who unwisely open emails and click on links or open attachments um, can be the way that um, many of our systems are hacked. So will the uh, council be taking that into account in its response? Um, thank you, Alderman Warren. Um, we uh, regularly, from an internal officer's point of view, receive emails updating us on recent threats or in most cases, the, uh, it might be an example of a, uh, an email where someone's trying to uh, get a response that triggers a, a, a hacking incident. Um, I'm not aware of whether aldermen are provided with those updates, but it's certainly a simple thing for us to include aldermen on those emails to make sure you're appraised as well. 
um, it might be a, a useful thing to cover with Alderman at some stage. I can do that. Yeah, look, it's an excellent point. Uh, I think we do need from time to time to be brought up to date with uh, sound IT security uh, procedures. Uh, the example of clicking on a link is is a classic example, a case in point. So thank you for that question, Alderman Warren. Okay, um, that brings us to the conclusion of Alderman's question time and uh, the conclusion of the open meeting. I'd like to thank the members of the public that have uh, stayed with us thus far. Uh, we do need to consider several confidential items and so the transmission for the open session will close at this point.